And now, suspense. Your host is Autolite, maker of a complete line of ignition engineered spark plugs, including the sensational wide gap Autolite resistor spark plugs and the dependable Autolite Stay Full battery. Autolite makes over 400 products for cars and trucks, bumpers and hubcaps, radiator grills and ornaments, bullseye seal beam headlights, ignition systems, spark plugs, batteries, fuel pumps, windshield wipers, instruments and gauges, wire and battery cable, and many more. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Auto Light. And now, Auto Light and its 96,000 dealers everywhere present Suspense.
put your name and address on this here card. Oh, come on, take it, mister. You're making a big mistake. I'm sorry, I've something else. Oh, sure, I know how it is. I'll mail it to you. Oh, fine, fine. All you do is enclose one buck and coin or stamps and mail it to me, Willie Fergus, care of the address listed thereon. In return, I will yes, send you yes. three high-class prints of yourself that you will treasure yes. forever. Yes, sir. Hold it. Hold it. That's it, folks. Now, all you got to do is sign your name and address to this here card, and I, Willie Fergus, will send you three high-class prints like you've never had before. What? Hold it. Hold it. No fool. Found, please. Hello, Lost and Found. This is Robert Quatermain speaking. Yes, that's correct. I just came in on the 358 from Washington, and I left my wristwatch in the washroom on the train. No, I can't remember the number. It was a coach. But the initials are on the back of the watch. Steel case, sweep second hand, mark and waterproof. Yes, that's right. If you will, please. Gramercy 3, 8841. I'd be very much obliged for everything you can do. Thank you very much. Robert! Hello, darling. Well, I didn't expect you so soon. I caught an earlier train. Oh, how was the convention? Just like a convention. <laughs> How's the big city? There hasn't been a crime wave or anything while I've been away, has there? That is about the only thing there hasn't been. Everyone has been trying to get you on the telephone. Oh? Uh -huh. I don't know how the city ever got along before they made you district attorney. Oh. Well, I made a list. As a matter of fact, I think I'm much more efficient than your secretary ever was. Now, let's see. Oh, yes. Someone from the clerk's office called. The McIntyre case has been put forward on the calendar, and the preliminary hearing is on Wednesday. Oh, no, not Wednesday. Well, that's what the man said. Judge Russell is trying this case, and it seems he wants to get away by Memorial Day so that he can get back to his gardening. Well, I'd like to do a little gardening myself. What on earth have you got all over your sleeve? Oh, I don't know. It's nothing at all. Well, Robert, is anything the matter? No, of course not. Here, let me have your coat. It's only that uh, I'm a little uh, nervous. Oh. It's a difficult case. I wanted to have more time to prepare it. Oh, there's soot all over this. It'll have to go to the dry cleaner. Well, can't you get a postponement? Not if Judge Russell's hearing the call of his gladiolas, I can. <laughs> well, just have to do the best we can, I suppose. I'm going in and take a shower. Maybe a nap. I'll call you. a doozer, Mr. Quartermain. This is really a doozer. I don't even know how long the stiff's been here. All I know for sure is that he's real stiff. Yeah, drag him out if you want. I'm through. Morning, Quartermain. Any findings, Doctor? Sure. After a careful examination, he's good and dead this morning. Did you fix the time, Doc? Yeah, he died in May. Sometime come on, in May. come on, Doc. He's stiff. Advanced rigor. Could have been any time since Friday. I can't put it any closer. I'll see you around. See what I mean, Mr. Quartermain? Whoever pulled this one had a head on him. He knew this office was closed on Sunday, and he seems to have gone over the place on his hands and knees. He wiped the fingerprints off everything. This place is clean. It's too clean. You're sure you haven't missed anything? Well, you must have known this guy. Who said so? Well, I mean, he was the medical examiner. Well, everybody knew him. That was before I came on the force. Oh, of course, yes. Uh, Freeman Marshall's the name, isn't it? That's right. Yes, he was county medical examiner about 15 years ago. I didn't know him, really. 
Well, he was booted out for falsifying medical records, trying to spring some big-shot gangsters. Oh, I seem to remember something of the sort. Yeah, and then he beat it for the coach. He didn't come back to New York until about two months ago. Two months, really? Mm-hmm. I suppose he figured the case was all forgotten. He could start up for practice again. You're sure you've forgotten nothing? Look, we combed this room. There isn't a thread in it. Well, we'll have to do the best we can, Lieutenant. Keep me informed, will you? All right. But well, I hope your reputation doesn't depend on my finding a customer to pin this one on. I hope not, Lieutenant. I'll be in the office. Burns, Thompson. I want everything out of that desk. I want everything out of those filing cabinets. We might as well look like we're getting somewhere. A candid portrait just suitable for end lodging. Now, all you got to do is fill your name and address out on this here little card and mail it to me, Willie Fergus, care of the address listed thereon. In return, I will send you three high glossy prints. Come on, it's only a dollar, mister. I'll tell you what, mister. When Willie Fergus takes your picture, you've got yourself a picture that'll make you famous. In just a moment, we'll see the second act of tonight's suspense story. But right now, friends, I'd like to show you another picture story from my album of familiar drivers. Now, Fifi was a dainty dog whose life was like a breeze. In dog show competition, she would take first prize with ease. But one time she became a sad and frowsy-looking pup. She got jounced and bounced and ruffled because her car was acting up. <laughs> well, I I'm going to halt the poem right there to tell you what was wrong with Fifi's car. You know... It was just another case of spark plugs that weren't working right. Now, to many people, spark plugs are just something you put in an automobile. But believe me, actually, spark plugs are mighty important parts of your engine. When they're not functioning properly, your car can act sluggish, can burn too much gasoline, lack power, and in general, fail to perform the way you want it to. Now, let me show you why. You see, a spark plug can fire as many as 10,000 times a minute when your car is traveling at high speed. This regular firing ignites the fuel at the cylinder at just the right instant. And that's why spark plugs are so important to the smooth and economical operation of your car. Now, of course, spark plugs aren't the only parts of the ignition system. No, indeed, other parts are the battery, the ignition coil, the distributor, and the spark plug wire. And all those parts, including Autolite spark plugs, are ignition engineered by Autolite engineers. They're the men you know who make complete ignition systems which are used as original factory equipment on many makes of America's finest cars and trucks. And that's why Autolite ignition engineered spark plugs are designed to work as a perfect team with the rest of the ignition system. Yes, that is mighty important. They're world famous, you know, for quality and dependability. And they come in types and sizes for every purpose, including the popular Autolite resistor type. One of the greatest advances in spark plug design for automotive use in the past 20 years. So friends, see your friendly Autolite spark plug dealer tomorrow and have the spark plugs in your car carefully checked. And remember, if replacements are needed, you can't buy better spark plugs for your car than ignition-engineered Autolite spark plug. Well, sir, we uh, recommended those wonderful Autolite resistor spark plugs for Fifi's car, and that brings us to the end of our poem. And a very happy ending it is, too. Our Fifi went on to the show and won first prize that night. She's learned what everyone should know. You're always right with Autolite. And now the second act of Photo Finish, starring Ralph Clanton and Eileen Hecker. What do you want? Why, Ralph? I'm sorry, darling. You startled me. Well, you startled me. I expected that you'd be at the office. Is anything wrong? Margaret, that suit I was wearing Saturday. Oh, I sent it to the cleaners yesterday morning. But there were things in the pockets. Well, I took them out. Everything? Well, yes, of course. Why? Something missing? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, there is. What? Oh, it's nothing. Just a little card. What sort of card? Oh, uh, a little white card about uh, so big. Uh, you haven't seen it anywhere, have you? Hardly no, darling. You haven't given me a very precise description. No, I don't suppose I have. 
Well, it's one of those little cards from a photographer, a sidewalk photographer. Oh! Have you seen it? No. Oh. What did you want it for? Oh, it's not important. It probably got thrown out anyway. Probably. Robert, what about the Marshall case? Well, what about it? Well, uh, I mean, have you got any leads? No. The trail seems pretty cold. I don't know how far we'll get. Marshall had a lot of rather unsavory acquaintances. You know, this has all the earmarks of a gang killing. And you know how hard it is to get anywhere with those. I just hope all this doesn't affect you in any way. Well, how should it affect me? Well, if they ever started digging into the past... Then There's I... nothing in the past. Well, only that case, Robert. Margaret, that... for heaven's sake, I was defending my client. How was I to know that he'd been bribed Marshall to give false oh, medical testimony? Darling, I know that it wasn't your fault, but you know what could happen if the newspapers ever got hold of that particular story. I've they... got nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. This was a case in good faith. It was my first case, remember that. Marshall swore to me that the bullet he removed from the body did not come from my client's gun. Then when we discovered All that he'd been All the same, surprised. I am going to feel much better about it if you find Marshall's murder. Then nobody can say anything. Nobody's going to say anything. <laughs> Rest assured of that, darling. Oh, oh, answer that for me, will you, darling? I've got to get back to the office, and I don't want to get involved unless it's important. Hello. Well, this is Mrs. Quartermain speaking. Might I take a message? Who? Pennsylvania Railroad? Yes. Yes. Well, thank you very much. I'll tell him. What's that all about? Pennsylvania Railroad, about your watch. Did you lose your watch? Oh, yes. I left it on the oh, train coming back from Washington. Really? I forgot to tell you. They... I don't suppose they could find it. No, they couldn't find it. Well, I'll run along to the office. Be back for dinner. Bye, darling. Take care of yourself. Anything turn up? No, this thing's colder than ever. I checked all his patients. There weren't very many of them. He's only been practicing about six weeks. Well, let's fold it up, shall we? File a report. Close it up. We'll send the boys around tomorrow to finish off. Hurry up. I'll buy you a drink. I'll take the drink. Terrible weather, isn't it? Yeah, it's worse than you think. Why worse than I think? I've got one small clue that might lead me someplace, and that washes out when it starts to rain. I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, I'm making a routine check up and down the block. The guy across the street tells me the curbstone camera has been working this block for the last week. Oh. Curbstone camera? Yeah, a sidewalk photographer. Now, if I can find that bird, he can tell me something. But he doesn't work when it rains. You haven't tried to locate him. There's 7,000 of those guys in the city. We're checking them, but it takes time. Yes, but you're looking for him. We got a list from the Bureau of Licenses, and we're checking each one. I see. Well, come along, Lieutenant. We'll get that drink we were talking about. friend? Yes, a photographer named uh, Willie Fergus, I believe. Yeah, Willie Fergus. Upstairs. He's getting mighty popular all of a sudden. Hey, Willie! A guy's here. How do you mean, mighty popular? Well, only this afternoon, some other guy was asking for him. A flatfoot. Policeman? Yeah. Well, he was out, but the flatfoot said he'd be back later. Somebody looking for me? Willie Fergus? That's me. Who are you? I'd like to speak with you for a moment. Well, what are you, selling something? Nothing to be alarmed about. It concerns photographs. Oh! Are you a customer? You might say so. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Up the stairs and around to your right. If I knew you was coming, I'd have baked the cake. I had a whole room. Ah, there you are. 
Something concerning having your portraits taken? I don't do much studio work, you understand, but in an emergency, I might be willing to help you out. I came by to pick up some photographs. Pick some up? Yes. Well, look, mister, you could have just sent in the car. I prefer to do business this way. Why, well, if it's a bad photograph, why should I pay a dollar for a bad photograph? Look, mister, in the first place, when Willie Fergus takes your picture, it ain't a bad picture. And in the second place, even if it was a bad picture, where else in town can you get a bad picture as good as this for such a bargain? <laughs> Give me the card. I'll take the picture. I'm afraid I've lost the card. Lost it? You lost it? Look, mister, how do you expect me to find your picture without the card? I take a lot of pictures. You see this file? It's all full of pictures. Well, there must be some way. Oh, sure, sure. There's a way. All I got to do is go through all these till I find a picture that looks like you. Oh, all right, all right. Rest yourself. Are you following this uh, Marshall case? What? This uh, Marshall murder of the doctor. Oh, yeah, yeah. That society doctor's got himself knocked off. <laughs> Look, you'll have to stay with me for a while, bud. I got these files all followed up. Oh, that's all right. Do you ever take any photographs in that neighborhood, Mr. Fergus? What? Said, uh, have you taken any photographs in there recently? Last Saturday afternoon, for instance. Saturday? Saturday. Hey, come to think of it, I did. <laughs> How do you like that? I got all about it. And right on the block where the guy was murdered, too. Oh, wait till the fellas hear about this. I'll be like a big celebrity. <laughs> Do you happen to remember what time you were there? Oh, I don't know. Three, three thirty or so. Not much business, though. Nah. Just one or two guys, and one of them was... What about him? What? You were going to say something about one of them. Who was I? I forgot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of them was... Ah. Here it is. I knew it was around here someplace. Yeah. Yes, pretty good, don't huh? Mind. Oh, I take a pretty good picture, you gotta admit... Hey, I remember you now. You're the guy who was in such a hurry you couldn't wait for the card, right? <laughs> you were taking your dirty clothes to the laundry. <laughs> You're very observant. Observant? Certainly I'm observant. My racket, you gotta be. <laughs> I'll even tell you when it was. Last Saturday, right? You're right. Wait, wait, I'll tell you the time. Between a quarter of four and four, somewhere around that uptown someplace, 68, 60... 68 and four... Oh. So that's why he was in such a hurry to get out of there, huh? And coming up here and asking all those questions. Right. Margaret. Margaret's handwriting. Hey, she sent it in. Hey, Willie. Hey, Willie. You got a can off of Willie? Quarterman, I'm sorry to bother you at this hour of the morning. This is important. What is it, Mercer? It's the Marshall case again. It's closed. No, it's not closed. A sidewalk photographer named Willie Fergus got bumped off last night, and the guy who bumped him was spotted by another character living in the same building. What's the connection, Mercer? Too much coincidence. That's the connection. Simply because the sidewalk Listen, photographer... Listen, I'm very interested in sidewalk photographers these days. I thought you'd want to know. Oh, yes, of course. But even so, it seems a pretty slim connection. Good morning, Lieutenant. What brings you here morning. so early? <laughs> the Lieutenant thinks he has a new lead on the Marshall case. Oh? Yeah, a sidewalk photographer was murdered last night, and we think it may have been the one that was working outside Freeman Marshall's office. Oh, really? Will you stay to breakfast, Lieutenant? Sorry, I don't have time, thanks. Anything there for me, darling? Oh, bills and circulars, mostly. Lieutenant, uh, was this photographer important? Well, it's hard to say. You see, there aren't very many people in that neighborhood on Saturday afternoon. And if this was the cameraman, he might uh, might have gotten a picture of the murderer. Oh, that seems like a pretty slim possibility, doesn't it? That's just what I was saying. Well, it may be slim. But if the murderer thought Willie Fergus got a picture of him... Speaking of pictures, Robert... What? A little surprise. I bet you forgot all about it. What have you got there? Oh, never mind. Go on, Lieutenant. What else? Well, there's not much else. Probably not, in, not anything to it. How? But I think it's shoot. important enough to keep the case open. <laughs> yes, Robert, you look... Do- Robert, when did you go to see? Now let me have that. Robert! I said, give it! Robert! 
Excuse me. Thank you. Very clumsy of me. When did you have this taken, Mr. Quartermain? Uh, quite some time ago. I don't remember the date exactly. You don't remember? Uh, why do you ask? Now, see here, Lieutenant, aren't you usurping your authority? That personal mail. It's addressed to you. Typical curbstone camera stuff. You sent for this, Miss Quartermain? Yes, I did, but I don't see very what that Very interesting. To... Sometimes when you dig into a crime, you don't always come up with a criminal right away, but you find out some very interesting things. I'm afraid I don't understand. I'm afraid you do understand. Why were you so anxious to close the case? Now, see here. what does he mean? I'm sure I don't know, what darling. I say, it's very interesting what you find when you dig into a murder. For instance, 15 years ago, Freeman Marshall falsified the medical evidence in a murder case. The defendant in that case was represented by Robert Quarterman. That's public knowledge. Maybe you know more about it than you're saying. Maybe you were in it with him. That's ridiculous. Maybe he came back here two months ago to blackmail you. Robert, this can't be true. Of course it isn't, darling. Maybe you went to his office Saturday afternoon to pay him off and said you got sore and bumped him off. At the time Marshall was murdered, I was on a train coming here from Washington. You prove that? Yes, as a matter of fact, I can. I left my watch on the train. The Pennsylvania Robert, Railroad has a record of that. in the drawer. Marshall! Why can't you leave things alone? In that rubber glove that was burning in the fireplace. Rubber gloves. Very handy when you don't want to leave any fingerprints around. Well, Mr. Quartermain, maybe I am ready to wrap this case up. Margaret. <laughs> Margaret, he was blackmailing me. Nasty business, blackmail. It's almost as bad as murder. You better get yourself dressed. Yes, I suppose I had. I don't suppose that suit has come back from the cleaners yet, has it? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> This is Rex Marshall speaking for Autolite, and in just a moment I'll tell you about our suspense drama for next week. But right now I have something very interesting to show you. You know, two types of seal beam headlights have been used in all cars made since 1940. Both are completely sealed so that it's impossible to get inside. Now, the question is, which type of seal beam unit do you want for your car when replacements are needed? One that will burn out the minute the lens gets cracked or broken, or the metal back Autolite bullseye seal beam with the extra safety protection because it continues to function even after the lens is cracked or broken. Yes, friends, the Autolite seal beam with the exclusive bullseye lens is the newest development in night driving. It's scientifically designed to put more light on the road by concentrating the stray reflected light and adding it to the main driving beam, just as you see there. Now, each Autolite bullseye seal beam unit is individually focused at the factory. And then it's sealed under pressure of 9,000 pounds per square inch so that dust or moisture cannot possibly get in. Then, as an extra safety precaution after they're sealed, these lamps are tested in hot water to prove that the seal is watertight. Only one of the many extra steps we take to make sure that Autolite seal beam units have no superior. So, remember, be sure and get the Autolite seal beam with the exclusive bullseye lens the white bright headlight that gives increased visibility at night and promotes greater safety on the highway. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. drama next week will be Listen, Listen, starring Mildred Natwick. Also be sure to hear Suspense each Thursday night on your radio. The Second Scum by Jay Thorpe. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.